So this uh, this security company, Know Before, just got hit with one of the the silliest and most ironic security incidents that I think I've ever read. It's it's so silly and ironic that I want to, or I feel compelled to make a video about it. A little bit of important background information about Know Before. They are a security awareness training company. So they provide services to train a company's staff on how to be uh, cyber safe and um, prevent social engineering attacks. They have a service that um, you can run simulated phishing attacks against your company. And I'm sure they do a bunch of other things other than just basic security awareness training and, and phishing simulations, but that doesn't really matter. What actually matters is the incident that just recently occurred. This was posted on the 23rd of July by No Before. This was voluntary. They posted this article themselves to, I guess, give awareness to other organizations of, of how something like this could happen to them. And they're calling this incident an organizational learning moment, which I think is a funny thing to call an incident. But um, yeah, let's get into it. Well, I just want to preface that supposedly no data was breached or compromised or anything was exfiltrated from no before. If you use this company or your company uses this company. Just want to put that at the beginning. So yeah, basically no before was hiring a software engineer for their internal AI team. And what ended up happening was they hired this North Korean threat actor who used social engineering and AI to get the job. He put himself or someone that looked like him on this stock image of a white man's face submitted it with his uh, resume, passed all the background checks, the interviews, the video conferences, and got the job. And then immediately, immediately started trying to download malware onto the laptop, which is just baffling to me. <laughs> I think if I were a threat actor who was going through the lengths of going through four video conference interviews, you know, going through a background check, going through all this work to get the job. I don't think I would immediately try to install malware onto the laptop that's given to me. You know, I think I would have, I'm going to stop saying I, a smart threat actor would, um, you know, give it some time, enumerate the environment a little bit, try and figure out if there's anything they can exploit or, you know, if they have any controls in place that would block this malware or detect this malware from being downloaded. But no, this guy didn't care. And the SOC team picked it up pretty much right away. So that's a that's a plus for no before. Great SOC team. The EDR software or endpoint detection and response software that uh, no before uses picked up on the malware that was attempted to be downloaded and ran. And the alerts were sent off to the SOC team. The SOC team called the new hire and asked him if he needed any assistance trying to get to the bottom of why malware was being downloaded onto this new hire's laptop. So they reach out to our North Korean hacker here. And he says that the reason for the suspicious activity was he was following steps on his router's guide to troubleshoot a speed issue, and that may have caused a compromise. Oh, that's stupid. So basically his excuse was that um, his router's manual told him to download malware to, to troubleshoot a speed issue. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what any... <laughs> Dude, that's ridiculous. I hope that no SOC team ever finds that response believable. Coming from a principal software engineer, so someone with an IT background, yeah, it's just insane. So yeah, basically after that response, you know, the SOC team, they contacted Mandiant and the FBI. After about 25 minutes after the first incident, they had isolated his laptop and, you know, contained the device. So good on the SOC team, honestly. Like that's, that's a pretty fast response. I mean, they didn't really have their work cut out for them, but... Still, that's that's a that's a fast response time. Enough shitting on the North Korean hacker and and giving no before praise because they still did quite a few things wrong here, and a lot of it is quite ironic. So at the bottom of their blog post, they give um, some tips to prevent something like this happening and what they need to improve. So starting with the actual interview, they say they conducted four video conference-based interviews on separate occasions, confirming the individual matched the photo provided on their application. But then here in their tips to prevent this, they say, <laughs> get these people on video camera and ask them about the work they are doing. So there's a little bit of a contradiction. Uh, I feel like they have to be talking about the hiring process because this guy got his laptop and immediately started downloading malware. Like he wasn't with the company for any time at all. 
moving on to the actual background check. I don't even know if you can call what they did a background check. Like there, there are so many red flags. Yeah, just looking at these bulleted points. The background check appears inadequate. Names used were not consistent. I mean, this is a very vague bullet, but like, what do you mean names were not consistent? Are you telling me like between his references and, and performing your background check that you found multiple different names for this guy? Like, what does that, what does that even mean? That just does not look good. Continuing on with the background check, references potentially not properly vetted. Do not rely on email references only. I really wish we could see this guy's resume. I don't know if he only provided email references or if they just only bothered to email and that's just part of their background check. Either way, not good. There were discrepancies in address and date of birth across different sources. Not only were names inconsistent, but also this person's address and date of birth. Like what? Like what is your background check? What are you, what are you looking for? And then of course no alarms were raised when uh, this guy asked to have the laptop shipped to an address that wasn't his home address. I don't know, just on top of all these other things, another huge red flag, especially for an IT remote position. Principal software engineer for the internal IT AI team. I feel like, I feel like you can't be that lenient. What are they looking for in their background check if it's not to verify these types of things and make sure that there are consistencies, you know, making sure that this guy is legitimate. I forgot to mention that this guy is using the identity of an actual US citizen that he had stolen or someone else had stolen and he had bought the information from. So I guess I can see where it'd be a little harder to identify illegitimacy, but still like, come on, did the guy that the identity was stolen from not have a LinkedIn or any social media presence or any phone number, address, anything like that linked to himself that doesn't match what this North Korean threat actor is, is using? It just doesn't make sense. I feel like that the whole purpose of a, of a background check is to find these things. Tell me they link their own shit. Oh my God. And then my favorite part of this whole incident, <laughs> and then my favorite part of this whole incident is this last bullet point under recommended process improvement. Conduct security awareness training for employees, emphasizing social engineering tactics, which is what no before does. This is their whole company. And then <laughs> to top it all off, they link, they link, <laughs> Okay. And this link takes you to their own security awareness training product where you can get a quote and all. <laughs> so they, they just have to throw in trying to sell you their security awareness training after this whole blog post was a big social engineering scheme that got a North Korean threat actor hired and immediately to install malware. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. You just can't make that up. The fact that this guy used AI to basically Photoshop himself onto this generic stock image of a white businessman and it passed applying for an AI team position, a software engineer for the AI team. Here's a blog post about how we were social engineered. By the way, get a quote. Get a quote for our security awareness training. All right, I think that's going to be the end of the video. If you want to read the article yourself, I'll post it in the description. I appreciate your time. See ya.